All right, so today's big idea is that we're going to talk about Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Google Search Console for a long time used to be called Google Webmaster Tools. So what we're going to do is talk about setting, the, setting this up, what it is, why it's useful. Because every website gets traffic. And the website itself, the provider might have um, statistics that it can show you about your traffic, uh, GoDaddy or Bluehost, they're going to provide you with their versions of statistics. But really, the big names in search obviously are uh, Google and, and Bing and such. And so Google will provide us with a with a truckload of information regarding the the traffic to our website. If you are active on social media, notice here I'm at the college's homepage. And they've got links to their Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and uh, Flickr, social media. Uh, the college could be getting traffic from any of these four networks or whatever other networks they're on. And we'd like to know how effective are we being on a social network? Is, is Facebook working for us? Is Twitter working for us? Maybe Flickr isn't working for us so that we can decide to try harder on a network or give up on that network and focus our efforts and resources on another. We don't know how well we're or how effective we're being on a social network um, without looking at statistics. And that's the big idea of what Google Analytics and Google Search Console are. They're going to tell us a lot of information. Where's our traffic coming from? How long do people stay on our website? A lot of traffic, a lot of uh, data, that is. Uh, and that's not automatic. We have to set it up. So this is always a requested feature in all of my classes and for clients. How do I set up Google Analytics, etc. That's what we're going to do right now. So let's go to the website google.com slash webmasters. Google.com slash webmasters. So I've known it for several years as Google Webmaster Tools. And they're in a transition, so they seem to, to now be calling it Search Console. Understand and improve your site in Google Search. So it's still Google Webmasters. Um, the umbrella term and the address. But now the actual tool that we're going to use is called Search Console. Let me play this video, this little brief video, to give us an overview of what this is. Um, I don't think my sound works anymore like it used to work. Let me play this short video. The internet this, is this amazing. Video is going it's so easy to share anything you, you create with the entire world. Online, like Alice, she just opened an online store for her custom jewelry. Opening. But now she is wondering, uh, search, can people Google find her site and mobile app on Google? Stand out with Search Console, Alice can make sure that Google finds her store Google, and shows it for the correct search uh, queries. Webmasters is about. Search Console so also found, displays the errors that Google, Google found when reading her site and app. Alice can check those errors and fix them so Advice all her pages can appear in search website. results. So Every time Alice creates a new product page, she can use Search Console right to audience. see which terms lead people uh, to her Google search results pages. Keywords, and she can and use that data like, to discover the most pages successful pages well, and products in her store. So she can focus on that and increase traffic to her business. Also, Search so Console short, regularly what, uh, checks her site for errors and even sends an email alert if it finds any important and, issues. Uh, malware on now Alice can be sure that back. everything so is okay with her site and app using Google Search Console. Of your, of your site, how well is it uh, findable? Are there any problems with it? So 
So what we'll do is we will go to the website google.com slash webmasters and we'll click sign in. If you were here last time we created a Google Plus account. We'll use the same login information. If you don't have Google Plus it's still just a matter of signing in with a Gmail account or creating an account. So I'm going to sign in <clears throat> with a previously existing um, Gmail account. If you don't have one, take a moment to create one. So go ahead and sign in. Do you already have uh, some Gmail account? But that doesn't sound like Gmail. Is it something that... and it doesn't let you? Then I, I would create a new one. Yes. So the overview of the Search Console, get the data tools and diagnostics needed to create and maintain Google-friendly websites and mobile apps. To get started, just add your site or app. Now this is pretty interesting because over the years as I've used this, it's always been focused on, on a website. But Google is such a big entity, it has Google Search, Google Maps, Google Mail, YouTube, and Android. So Android is a property from Google. So if you've got an Android phone, the underlying operating system is, is Google software. And so Android apps can also be tracked to see how many downloads you have and how much time people spend on your app and so forth. That's beyond our scope. But if you've got an Android app, um, that can be added to this search console. We're going to be talking about a website. Here are some of the things you can do once you add your property. Analyze clicks from Google Search, get alerts for critical errors, and test whether Google can successfully understand your content. So nowadays, searching, um, that's the way people get to your site or learn about your app, your online presence. And Google search is the big search engine. Uh, so once you know any issues with your site, you can address them. So the way this will work is it's going to ask you for your website or app. And it's called a property. So it's either your website or your app. So we're going to deal with a website. If you've got a website, go ahead and put its address there. One tip that I'll give you is let's say I've got the website victor.com and I'm gonna say let me add that website to my search console so I can keep track of the traffic and such. But the odd thing is that Google differentiates between www. your website and the non www version. So both of these will be valid and will have different data, www.victor.com or victor.com. We do need to add both versions. We have to do one than the other. And so what I am going to suggest is I would first add the non-WW version. Once we set this up, then on the next screens, I'll show you then adding the other version because technically these are different websites, these are subdomains. It's all um, sort of uh, technical behind the scenes stuff because sometimes there's a website, for example, that could be sales.victor.com or there could be blog.victor.com and that, those are different subdomains. Those are technically different websites even though they have the same, the, the same root, victor.com. So if you've got a website 
you most likely have the non-WW version and the WWW version. And you might even have some more advanced um, versions of websites with, you know, like sales.mywebsite.com. We'll have to add them all. I'm going to start off with the plain non-WW version. Because when you visit a website, think, for, think about yourself. When you visit a website, do you type its address with the WW or not? And people all over the world are the same way. Some type it with the WW, some don't. And that's different traffic. So I'm just going to put in my non-WWW version of my address and click Add Property. Now, it's not just simply then going to say, okay, great, here is your data. We have to verify ownership of the, of the website that we claim to have access to. Because in the real world, if someone were to ask me, where do you live? And I say, oh, I live on that big mansion in La Jolla. Well, they're not going to believe me until I walk up to the door and unlock it with my butler and walk in. So, same thing here. Google is not going to believe this is your website just because you wrote this is your website. Um, so there's a few verification methods, some easier than others. Depending on your website, we will be able to do this. So let me go over the general idea of which methods we have. And then usually what we do is we have time individually. I build in some time to set this up individually on, on, the, on this day because this often changes depending on the per person's website. And so here it's asking recommended method and um, alternate method. And so one method is um, uploading a file. There's this file that, in my case, it's giving me this specific HTML file with my unique code. And one method is for me to download this verification file, log into my service provider, and upload uh, that file. And then Google, once I click Verify here, will check on my website, victor.com, Google, blah, 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 that HTML. If it can find that, then it's a verified site. If it can't, that must mean it's not really my site. Because this is what stops your competitor from getting all of these statistics of your site, and vice versa. You can't see this kind of data for your competitor because you cannot verify their site. This is one method, the upload method. Maybe we don't have a file server to upload to. We have a website, but we have a kind of a website that doesn't have FTP access, for example, to upload. There's alternate methods. I have also HTML tag. Add a meta tag to your site's home page. This one requires that I copy this line of code, this meta tag, and add it to my website, to the home page. The example shows that somewhere in the code of your website you're going to see HTML tag, head tag, body tag, and you're going to copy that line and paste it into your home page. Then I would return to Google here and click verify. It's going to be either or. You don't do both. You don't upload the file and you add the meta tag, it's either or. That's one method as well. If I can edit my site, this is a way to do it. There's a few other methods. If I've got Google Analytics already set up and verified, I can use Google Analytics to vouch for my site here. I don't have Google Analytics, so I can't do it. I might have Google Tag Manager. If I've got that set up, I can verify this as well. But it's a moot point, I don't have it. And then there's this method that I would not bother with. This, even for myself, I think it's too hard. 
domain name provider. This is okay. If you've got GoDaddy, this will give you instructions what to do. If you've got Bluehost, these are instructions. This is not really going to do anything easily. This is just going to give you instructions for all of these possible domain names, Wix.com and such. And some are more easier than others, but many times people often have providers like, let's say, GoDaddy, Bluehost, you know, these big providers. This method really is a bit complicated and technical. Verify and do easy steps. I never do this really, even for me, it's a bit complicated. Either I do recommended method, which is upload of an HTML file, or copy one line of code into my site. And this is where, when I teach this, this is where we have to stop, this is where we have to pause, that if you would like to try this, we're going to take some time for individual help, because everyone's going to vary a little bit. Some of you might have the FTP method, and you can upload your file. Some of you might have access to your HTML code, there's that method. So I can't exactly stop and say, okay, everyone, do this on your website. Some of you might not have a website, some of you might not have access to the server, blah, blah, blah. So at this point, we're going to pause for a little bit. Um, that if you would like to try this, if you need any help at this point, we'll stop and help you. And then after we get everyone up to speed, then we'll go on to see, well, what did we do? What's the whole point of this? So let's take a moment to you try either on your own to do the recommended method or the alternate method, or call me over and we'll figure it out.